let's see what it takes to purchase a reserved instance in AWS. So I can select many, many different options. I can select platform among 20 platforms or so. I can select tenancy, like dedicated or default. I can select an offering class. And to select an offering class, I need to dive deep into documentation to understand what's the difference between convertible and standard. I need to select a particular instance type. For example, I want to use R7G12X large, and I can select term and the payment option. Then I click on search, and AWS gives me a list of many different options I can choose from, uh, depending on the combination of all upfront and standard, or all upfront and convertible, or partial upfront and convertible. So I need to really understand what all of this means, and then wisely choose how many instances of this type I want to purchase for which period of time, which is a lot of calculations. Now let's compare it with the savings plans. So I go here to savings plans, and then I click on purchase a savings plan. And here I can select one of the three different types of savings plans. The default one is compute savings plans, which applies to Fargate, Lambda, and EC2. I can select commitment, one year or three year, and I can write down my commitment. So let's say I want to spend $2 per hour, and I don't want to pay anything upfront. So now it means that every hour of every day for 12 months, AWS will charge me $2. And then depending on which computer resources I use, AWS will automatically apply the discount uh, to these resources and consume these two hours that I committed to uh, hourly. So then I don't need to think about which instance family, which instance type, uh, upfront convertible standard. No, I just say I'm ready to pay one and a half thousand per month or seventeen and a half thousand per year on my compute stuff, and then I let AWS figure out the best discount for me. And on average, it's probably between twenty and thirty percent cheaper for the option of one year no upfront uh, commitment. Now to properly select your hourly commitment, you need data how much you are currently spending on your AWS. So it's important to follow all the steps that we described in one of the previous videos on what you need to activate to get all of this data. And then you will have a graph like this in your cost explorer. So you will see that uh, you spend every day this amount of money on your uh, EC2 or Lambda or Fargate. And then you see here, ideally it's elastic, so it's not the same amount every day. You will have less on the weekend and then you will have more during the work days. And then maybe you will have some big spikes because of some big events. And then based on this, you can calculate the average price. So in this case, the average price would be around 49.7 bucks per day. So then divided by 24, we can get the hourly price. An important thing now, you should not take this average price as your hourly commitment. Because remember, once you commit, this money will be used to get resources for the discounted price. So if you just say, I'm ready to spend 50, and you already spent 50, this will mean that you will only consume like 70% of this commitment, because you will get discounted resources. So the good practice is that you take the average price per hour, and then you maybe take out 35 to 40%. So let's say if you spend per hour 100 bucks, then commit to 60 to 70 bucks per hour, and that will roughly end up with you covering all of your compute costs with the savings plan. And I would be even more aggressive and lean towards 40% off from the hourly price, because you never know, maybe you will spend even less money thanks to cost optimization uh, steps that you will do in the future. And you can always purchase more savings plan to optimize or reduce your costs further. But once you commit, you already spend this amount of money. So you don't want to overpay for 12 or 36 months uh, only because you miscalculated. So do your math correctly. Now, besides doing your own calculations, AWS will also try to help you to understand how much you should spend on the savings plans. So you just go to Billing and Cost Management Console and you go to the section called Savings Plans and you click on Recommendations. And over here, AWS will recommend what kind of savings plan you should purchase. 
and they will show you different kind of predictions for one year or three year term all upfront no upfront partial upfront and you can select to base recommendations on the last seven days 30 days or 60 days because maybe only the last 60 days or only the last seven days are truly representative of your real usage and remember so these recommendations are a good baseline so you still need to do your own calculations and even to get these recommendations in place you should do all the steps that are described in our other video where we outline the main five steps that you need to do in any AWS account to even start thinking about cost optimization. And of course, even with this recommendation that you have here, you still need to do a lot of work yourself to fully understand your usage because even before you start committing, maybe there are lots of things that you can optimize in your infrastructure and just by optimizing your infra you will already pay less and only then you should look into compute savings plans and one of the great ways to understand your usage and which changes you need to do in your infrastructure is to sign up for our aws cost audit where basically for four to six weeks we completely analyze your infrastructure and we interview a team and we understand what your usage is and what your usage should be and then we give you a comprehensive report with all the cost optimization strategies and actions also around scalability and security and other things plus we will fill in your backlog with the action items that your team can just take into the sprint and start working to optimize your cloud bill that's it for this video once again i recommend you to watch the video where we recommend the first steps that you need to do to even get to the stage of looking at the compute savings plans but once you are there Really, I would recommend to consider compute savings plans as the main committed way to optimize the cost and keep reserved instances for things like RDS or open search. For EC2, Fargate and Lambda, compute savings plans offer the simplest way to cut your costs because you don't need to think about instance family, size, tenancy. You just say, I commit to this amount of money and AWS does everything for you and saves you money every single day. Do you think your project infrastructure is well set and maintained? We know for sure there is always room for improvement. If you are uncertain where to begin, let's first do an audit of what you already have. We will review your setup from every angle, performance, cost, security, high availability, automation, and provide you with a detailed roadmap of which direction your infrastructure should go generate concrete tasks for you to implement, or even take on your infra entirely, if you let us, of course.